Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical tuning in, and we are going to be doing a little bit of fly fishing today. <laughs> I'm here with Captain John Hand. You've seen him on my channel, and we've got a, a new friend as well. We are, I myself am not particularly uh, any kind of a special fly fisherman, but these gentlemen are experienced fly fishermen. So for you guys that are not experienced fly fishermen, I, I'll try and throw in some tips for you guys along the way. Definitely, you're, you're talking with Captain Hand in particular is a master instructor, so... We, I'm sure these gentlemen will, will be nice enough to drop some tips along the way. We are going to go light tackle fly fishing for Florida game species. We're going to be targeting snook and redfish on the barrier islands of the Everglades. Okay, inside of the barrier islands down here in Everglades National Park. It is definitely one of the most desirable areas to fish. Beautiful natural environment, well preserved. Captain Hand is, uh, as you guys have seen in, in former videos, you, there's all kinds of different regulations and permits that you need to be able to do this kind of guiding down here. So Captain Hand's fully certified. This is what he does for a living. And he has brought a guest with him as well who is another experienced fly fisherman. So I'm going to be mostly filming here. I am uh, in no way knowledgeable on these subjects. I'm going to be the camera guy for today, but I have brought some real pros we have some real pros with us. I guess they brought me, so really looking forward to getting into that. Comment below if there's anything particular you guys are hoping to see in this video, and definitely I'll I'll get these guys involved in the future, or if you have any questions or comments, comment them on this video. I'll refer to them and, and, and try to answer your questions the best that I can. Let's get right into it. So, then I make a cast. To just sort of get a sense of the distance they'll be casting. Okay. I don't know how far you want to be. Yeah, I'd say right there is going to be the further someone to Yeah, right there will be good. So you're gauging your casting distance right now? Yeah. Well, he's, yeah, he's getting his line straightened out. Okay. Off the, off the reel, cast it a couple of times, kind of stretch it. Because like you said, in cold weather, it'll, it'll kind of loop up on you. Okay. It'll, it'll kind of get coils in it that'll stay there. Can you see the coils on it here? Yes. Yeah. So just so by kind of stretch it, it out a little bit, cool. it casts more easily. And it won't tangle up as much. Another trick, too, is if you don't take out more line than you're going to throw, Okay. You want to bump the reel, what we call bump the reel. So if you cast all that line out, you won't have near as many lots. The problem most people have is they take out more line than they'll ever cast. So it just lays on the deck and rolls and rolls and rolls and they never cast it out. So that's why they get all those loops and knots in their fly line. Oh, okay. So what? how do you prevent that exactly? By taking the right amount of line out okay where when you cast it actually bumps the reel what we call bump the reel okay all the line goes out all the way to the reel so you don't want any more line yeah, off see, the cast reel a little more to the left to you the right Jim, so you can see it. that bump that I'll reel it yeah that way yeah just so they can see what it looks like when you bump the reel so this will be the bump see how it goes oh, all the way to the reel yeah. that's what we Did call bumping that's what out. we call bumping the reel okay so if you bump the reel every time, that'll eliminate, that straightens that line back out because it gets a twist in it as you're casting it. Okay. If you cast to the left with a left-handed foot, it, it twists to the right. If you cast to the, if you're a right-handed caster, it'll twist to the left. Okay. So otherwise you got to do other gimmicks to get that twist out of there later. Gotcha. But if you bump the reel, it'll keep those twists out of there. Okay, and so I've heard guys talk about 
what they say wind knots, but I think you've told me before that really there's no such thing as a wind knot. It's just it's, it's a casting. Poor, it's knot. bad casting. It's improper casting. Improper casting. Yeah. So you don't get if you know what you're doing, you don't get knots in your line. Right, exactly right. Well, some well, some of us don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure somebody's going to take it's, offense to that. It's not a sure. <laughs> it's not a sure thing. <laughs> and this is what you want to do. What Jim's cast. doing. You'll see him work the what we call work the leader. When we're working the mangroves like this, mm -hmm. we call it work the leader. Okay. So what you're doing is he's throwing it out. Okay, letting it hit. Okay, now he's going to strip it. The length of the leader is about 10, 12 foot. So he's going to move that the length of the leader. Okay, and then he's going to pick it up. Then he's going to put it right back in there. So he's basically trying so to he, stick that fly as deep into the mangroves as he can right, get it without exactly getting it right, caught on that's something. That's where they're going to be on this incoming tide. We're fishing the incoming tide, so he just had a hit. Oh, yeah. Just yep. had a little he fish just had fight a hit. something. Yep. Did you see the fish, John? No, no. I saw him pull, though. And see, and you fish it back in there, but that way you're fishing productive water. You're not. And he doesn't make four or five casts. That fly is not in the air. It's in the water. Right. You don't catch fish in the air. Right. That fly's got to be in the water. The more that flies in the water, the more chance you have of catching a fish. Oh, wow. Beautiful cast. The pockets? That's what we call picking the pockets. Just stuck that fly right yeah. there in that tiny little hole. Yeah. Beautiful cast. So you want to be able to, when you practice, you want to be able to put it on a dinner plate. Okay. Wow. This what is. Jim is capable of doing. What you, what you, what you guys are watching right now is, uh, <laughs> are some real pros in action. So. As you're getting a chance to see people who are now if, we, now if we just find a fish that wants to cooperate then we'll be in good shape <laughs> great control over the fly able to put it put it on a dinner plate captain yeah 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 okay dokey. at how many yards away do you think you could put on a fly on a dinner plate uh well foot you know like no i mean how many foot. distance how, like what? if the dinner plate was 30 yards away could you do it no no 20 30, 30 yards that would be 90 foot 15 yeah, 20 yeah. What's the no, what's the max? No, 50, 60. Yeah. 50, 60 feet. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a quite a quite a bit of distance. Yeah. 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 Boy, I'm off on that. That's okay. See how you're wanting to pull your rod to the right? You want to stop. Your, yeah, your rod should be to the left. There you go. See how his rod tip should be to the left. See, he's left-handed caster. So when he stops that rod, that fly should be straight at or slightly to the left of the fly. Okay. See, when he came around a little bit far to the right, it opened the loop up and he wouldn't, didn't cast and it wouldn't properly put in there. Okay. So, so whenever you're cast, like I'm a right-handed caster, see how that flies, that rod's pointing straight at the fly there? Definitely. Yeah. Well, now I'm a right-handed caster, so mine should be straight at the fly or slightly to the right of my target. Okay. And then that increases your accuracy. Okay. Most and people pull it around to the left or right too far. So you can't, instead of pulling the fly to the target, you got to drive the fly to the target. Gotcha. So you make that tight loop and it drives the fly right where you want it to be. Okay. <clears throat> and again, it's winter time. And so the reason that we chose this area is because we really, we always worry about water temperature, but we're, I guess we're right. more worried about it in the winter. Right. Okay. See, we're, we were about 65 degrees. Our temperature right now is 67.5 okay so we've got just a little bit warmer and it's going to warm up even more because we're on the north shoreline of this bay which has southern exposure okay so this is the north shoreline and what we're looking at for southern exposure is that the sun is at our backs right and see how it goes up up against the trees yes the sun shines right up against that edge so all of this so is like all this direct wood, sunlight see all this timber that was down when the when the tide was low yes and the sun shined on that timber that timber will hold heat okay so, it's so all these, you know, it's all these hot spots is what we're looking for. The fish are going to be in this water and more active here because the water's a little bit warmer than the rest just, of the water. Just a few degrees. And that's because the water's still. There's not a lot of movement here right. because we're back. The wind's not on the water. Exactly. The wa so the water's sitting here, and we're looking for that northern Jim, shore you, southern watch exposure. Your back, your back cast there, Jim, as I turn you down this other side. All right. And as Captain Hand talks about turning the boat, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a view of what he means and how he's doing it so he's in here as you can see right here behind me and captain Hand is actually using a fiberglass pole we call it a push pole and 
this uh, this is a flats boat that we're on, so it's very it's capable of entering very skinny water. What would you say, five, five or six, six inches? inches yeah. Five or six inches of water. It's a Hell's Bay Guide Edition. It's a Hell's Bay Guide Edition. Uh, basically, you know, the top of the line when it comes to flats boats and and the ability to go in very shallow water. So. What what a Captain Hand will do is noise when he doesn't have somebody filming on the boat with him making a lot of noise, he's uh, he's doing it <laughs> silently polling and stalking the the fish here. So if uh, if we're not catching a bunch of fish today, we can blame it on me scaring them all away. But what what we would normally be doing is is Captain Hand back here. Uh, hope you guys can get a good view of that. But he's pushing the boat through the water there. And I don't use a trolling motor when I'm, in most cases, when I'm uh, guiding because I can control the boat so much better with the push pole. Okay. Uh, I can back it up, I can spin it around, I can hold it steady uh, to approach these fish. It's quieter uh, than using a trolling motor. So right now we're blind casting, but a lot of times this is, and it's very similar to hunting, anything you're going to be doing in the outdoors, but a lot of times this is even so similar to hunting that we could even get to the point where we're sight casting fish, right? Where we're actually just like stalking game. You're gonna be pulling through here. I mean, down to the point where you can see Captain Hand's outfit right now is a, kind of like a very, look how his shirt's the same color as the sky. Muted, that's right. Muted tones yeah, and- you guys come uh, fly fishing or on, when you're sight fishing especially, don't wear bright colored shirts, bright colored hats. Uh, white, don't wear white, because you make that movement, uh, they're going to see that movement a lot more than if they will if it's a muted color, khaki blue, sky blue, um, you know, that kind of stuff where it's, it's a kind of a muted color, they won't see it as much. We're actually uh, working on some shirts right now through Bone Tactical that are, that are going to be specifically for this kind of work, and I'm going to, I've been working with Captain Hand on a lot of product development, and I'm going to have Captain Hand uh, is going to be helping me prototype those shirts and down here in the Everglades as well. So a lot of what I'm down, doing down here for myself is is trying to learn from these guys uh, constantly. Captain Hand's been a mentor of mine for for 25 years, 30 years. So uh, I like to learn from from the best. And I have a I've been blessed with the opportunity to be down here with some with some pros learning from them, and and we will. I I kind of personally translate that into product development, as you guys know with working on newer and better products. And one of the things that I have learned is about the clothing. So both of these gentlemen are, are, are wearing clothing for the elements that's, that's down to the point where it's moisture wicking, it's uh, UV blocking, and so we're, we're working on a, a lot of those properties as well. Uh, I have one of the one of the current models right now. By the time this video posts, we'll probably already have been developing the newer clothing. I have some of our this is our all weather gear clothing. The shirt that I'm wearing right now it's more designed for uh, kind of a either a colder I would say not direct not all, not hot weather all direct sunlight all day long. And what you see these gentlemen wearing is uh, actually polyester that's been treated with antimicrobial agents and they are anti-wrinkle uh, ripstop material polyester which polyester is naturally uv blocking so something a lot of you you gear lovers are gonna you know because every pretty much everybody that watches this channel is is really into the the top yeah. gear so these guys are are <laughs> some uh <laughs> these guys are some gear lovers right here as well you can see they're fully outfitted all the way down to the hats UV blocking hats, UV sunglasses are very important. Captain Hand is, uh, are you running Smith Optics? Smith, yeah. I think we were we were doing Costas uh, the, the last few videos and we've made the switch I'm over. Eagle eyes, which Look at that uh, yellow crown night here and sitting up there. Yeah, it's a beautiful bird. Seen. It's a beautiful bird. Beautiful, that's my favorite, I love them guys. Yeah, they are. That ruby eye is amazing. Yeah. yeah. This bird right here. Unfortunately, I'm filming on the GoPro, so I'm not yeah. sure yeah. <laughs> how much you can see. I will. I will for you guys. Try and I'm going to try and get a real steady shot here, so I can zoom it in on in After Effects and see how much resolution we actually have on this bird. But it is a beautiful bird, absolutely beautiful. That's one of the great things about fishing down here in the Everglades. Unspoiled, unspoiled terrain, just beautiful, like, virgin. Like living at Sea World. Yeah, <laughs> Captain Han. Every time we're out here, he says. We'll see dolphins roll, catch big sharks, whatever we're doing. It's 
like living at SeaWorld. There's crocodiles you'll see occasionally down here. I mean, just, just you see everything. Manatees all over the place. So. Living the dream. Living the dream. Exactly. Exactly. There you go. That's all right. Well, that's a presentation technique. You see how it dropped out of the tree like a mud crab? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We meant to do that. Yep. Yeah. Presentation technique. So would you would you be running a fly right now that's con that you would consider to be more towards the spectrum of weedless? Yeah, it's yeah. got a, it's got a what's a, a weed deflector or also known euphemistically as a fish deflector. <laughs> so Jeff the puts weed guards on his flies. I don't. So and that's a, that's an interesting concept I'd like to discuss because just from fishing with Captain Han and and some uh, good fly fishermen like Mr. Jim here, we. I have been able to see that some, a lot of guys, it's its a balance, right? So some guys know that they're going to be re, f casting into the mangroves. They're going to, they're pushing the, the envelope, trying to get that fly as close as they can to the shoreline because that's where these fish are sitting up under these roots. They might be sitting in the shadows and then waiting on, you know, either some, some bait to come by or the tide to push up some, some kind of little morsels of food that they're going to come out and eat. Well, that's what we're doing, kind of imitating the fly. Uh, Captain Han just mentioned that when it, when you accidentally cast into a tree like that and it falls out of the tree, it looks very similar to a hermit crab or a little fiddler crab, uh, not a hermit Man crab, a mangrove, crab. mangrove crab falling out of the tree. Uh, and, and then the, the fish might just jump up there and eat it. Like yep. what we're looking at, well, Captain Han doesn't like to run weed, weed guards on his flies because you are a little bit less likely to get a hookup on that fish but it's it's just a it's a balance of how often you're going to be getting it you know into the mangroves and then whether you know i know personally i do a lot of fishing on the mangroves myself too with the spinning setup and and if i do get hooked up in the mangroves to the point where i can't go where i can't pull it out myself and i have to go get it i feel like i've ruined the whole spot for myself because i end up getting the boat up over there stirring up all the water making yep. a lot of noise there's oftentimes some yelling and, and, and some words that shouldn't be said on camera as well, but <laughs> so, so I think, uh, you know, it's a choice you got to make whether you're going to run your, your weedless or whether you're going to try and risk it. So it's, it's a lot of just, funny just little remember, things. If it's, if you, if the fly gets in the trees, it's your guide's fault. Because a guy had you six inches too close to the mango. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's it's always the guide's fault. <laughs> well, one, of, one of the things that would be important would be for the guide to say where he thinks the, the fly ought to be so that the fish will be willing to eat it. <laughs> so does it have to be yep. right in the mangroves or right. does it have to be two feet out? or what, What's a good spot for that? That's right. a good question, yeah, we'll though. Hit different, like we'll hit edges where we'll be casting the fly further out because the fish will be further out from the bank. Mm -hmm. If it's shallow, we'll fish more like a beach drop off. Okay. And you'll see that, you'll see that edge. So we work that edge as opposed to casting right up in the, in the mangroves like we're doing here. But right now, this area where we're at, they're, uh, they're right up in these roots and right up under the trees, up against these roots. Okay, these roots. So, so right now there's enough water up there, right? Point is what it is. What's that? Right now there's enough water up there in the mangroves. Yeah. They go back in the trees. To where they're up in the trees. So, and then as the tide drops out, right. they'll come out because there's not water up there, right? Exactly. Okay. And then as the tide continues to get lower and lower, they'll completely leave the mangroves and then go over to the holes. Right. Okay. So that's really, we're really following the tides. We're following I the currents. I thought you will, grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> My Jedi training is, is coming, coming to a fruition. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> yep. So what kind of prey would these fish be feeding on down Cra here? Yeah, crabs, uh, bait fish. Okay. So small uh, mullet maybe, but mostly mostly crabs. And we've seen some. We saw some rain minnows yesterday, which is actually a Cuban anchovy. Okay. Minnow. We call them rain minnows because when you find a school of them, it looks like rain. There you go. Whoa! Oh, just had a. Uh oh no! Somebody did a trout lift there. I think. I did. I did. <laughs> so what he's talking about there was, I tried to set the line, set the hook by pulling the line, the rod, mm -hmm. the rod, and what what we should be doing. It's called a strip set, which looks like this. Straight, straight. Oh, okay. You keep the rod pointed straight at the at the fish, and strip hard, which sets the hook. 
and then you sweep the rod to the side. So you don't you set don't, the you hook? You don't lift the rod, you sweep it to one side or the other. Okay. I don't started... try to set the hook with the rod tip because okay. it's so flexible that they won't, you won't set the hook. So if you strip strike first, you know, then you, then you set the hook, then you, then you move the rod. But if you move that rod, another thing is if we strip strike, you're only moving that fly six or eight inches. Yeah. So if you miss him, you're still in the zone. If you keep doing that, he'll follow that fly all the way to the boat. But if you do a trout set by lifting that rod, you move that fly six or eight foot, he's not going to chase it. Yeah. He'll go right back into his right right back into his uh, ambush position and stay there. Okay. So that's the key with strip striking in salt water. Awesome. So, uh, that was an example of what not to do. What not to do. There you go. But you have to understand, Jim just came down from up north trout fishing. So, <laughs> and it depends. So, fly fishing, as as any kind of fishing, really, the techniques you have to change them depending on the species and where you're at. Species, yeah. Okay. The species, the area. Trout fishing, you do it with the trout fishing. And bone fishing, you fight them with the rod tip. Okay. So bone fishing, you, both of them, you use a real light leader. So if you if you fight them with the tip of the rod, it's much more forgiving and flexible than if you fight them with the butt of the rod. Okay. These, these fish here in salt water, we're getting snook and redfish. First, they're gonna first thing they're gonna do is head for those roots, head for a dead tree. So that for that point, you gotta fight them with what we call fight them with the butt of the rod and fight them uh, down low so you can turn their head and turn them away from the structure. Okay. Because trust me, they know where every freaking log is laying out here. Those big snook know where every log, every tree limb. And they'll go right there and break you off. They'll go right there and break you off. Yep. That's exactly right. Oh yeah. Yeah, you guys, I, there's a video up here on the channel where I was fishing with Captain Han and caught the biggest snook I've ever caught to date. And right previously to catching that monster snook, I had a bigger one on the line yep. that broke me off. Yep. So. Yeah, because he headed for those roots. He knew right where those roots were at. I, I think it was it was seconds. It was seconds that I had to, to get down there. And, yeah, exactly. And it's I didn't like do it in time. Yeah. It was seconds and he was oh, half yeah. a mile away from it. Yeah. <laughs> fooling us I, the captain didn't move fast enough that day that well that was that was my uh i didn't even know what was going on to tell you what was going on <laughs> my my reel strip so fast so one of the things john just did was change the orientation of the boat from a safety standpoint the caster never casts straight over the stern okay because that'll put everybody in the boat at jeopardy don't hook the captain right and you definitely yeah. don't want to Irritate your guide. Right. Have you ever been hooked, Captain Han? Not by a fly. No. The only fish that's ever put a hook in my hand was a ladyfish fishing with a treble hook. Now, have you ever been hooked by somebody casting no. on the front? No. No. Okay, that's good. So that's that's. That's, where I wear, that's why I wear a wide brim hat. Yeah. Really, okay. And I have a push pole. And glasses. I have deflected many a fly. I have okay. deflected many a fly with my push pole. Or the hat. My son caught his first bass when he was three years old. I've been wearing a wide brim hat ever since. And the force is strong with you. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing you want to make sure you wear is, is a good pair of eyeglasses. Yeah. Okay. For safety. Yeah. Yeah. For safety and, uh, and as we talked a little bit about the polarization is yeah. a big deal for being able to see fish, right? Oh, yeah. That's right. Okay. Uh, back in here, like back in here, the water's kind of muddy. Mm -hmm. As we get further out, it'll clear. You saw it was clearer where we came in, so it should clean up as we go further out. So when we're stalk we fishing, see some fish maybe when we get on down. So when we're when you're stalk fishing, then you you can actually a good pair of glasses can mean the difference between you even being able to see the fish that oh, you yeah. can catch. Oh, definitely. Okay. Definitely. I switched to Smith because I had toasters on. Yeah. Right, John, I'm afraid I'm stuck. I don't know if I should say this or not. Oh, uh, we got you, it. You just gotta have a little faith. No, yeah, people. Face, Jim, that's all. People for that's sure right. want to hear the what's the best, and and as far well, as the okay, polarization well, and the well, fishing okay, goes. I had Costas on, and I had three guys. Two of them were guides, came and fished with me, and all three of them were wearing Smiths, and all three of them saw fish before I did. 
So we're talking Not just about one yeah. fish. I mean, I'm talking multiple fish they saw before I did, and they were down on the deck, and I was up here. So we're talking about the the so Costa that, was the king of, of sunglasses for, for reason, a while. Yeah, for that reason, I switched to Smith. And now now Smith optics seem to have a little bit of a better polarization. Fish of the day. Yeah, so now we'll do the fisherman trick. Yeah. Hold them, really Hold them close. super close to the camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you like these awesome videos and you want to be notified when I post more, then you need to go to my channel homepage on YouTube. You need to click the subscribe button, but not only that, then you have to go over here to the bell. You got to click the bell and then you click all. If you don't do that, YouTube won't notify you when I'm putting up this awesome new content.